This week's podcast is sponsored by Jim King Clothing. Head over to thegymking.com and check out their latest products. Okay, three, two, one. You're a hard man to get in the studio, Badger, <laughs> on your own. By popular demand, we have got you in, though. You're a hard man to track down. Thank you for coming on. You know what? I wouldn't even, I'd let you off and just not add you on if you didn't have all these fucking ridiculous <laughs> stories that we've got to talk about. How are you, mate? You all right? I'm sad, I'm sad. You know me, I'm not self promote. I just, <laughs> I just get in there and just do my thing, though. Well, you're an unsung hero of British Muay Thai. I thought this because you just, that's exactly how you went about all your career. Uh, you just got about it. You didn't like chat no shit. You want, didn't promote yourself, didn't brag. You just got in there and did it. And I think that's why a lot of the top level fighters, like obviously myself, Jordan, Dean James, Andy, you are like the, their, their favourite fighter in the UK. <laughs> Before we come on to all that though, there's been some good shit happening this weekend that we just need to touch on a little bit because there's been two of the best one punch knockouts in uh, one in one championship and the other one in the boxing. Mate, did you watch Kulab Dam knock Sangmani out on one championship? I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I was sat just chilling, watching it. I'm thinking this is gonna play out. There's gonna be a kicking fight. It's gonna be, oh my god, he's, dead. <laughs> <laughs> he's down! And he was out before he hit the floor as well. It was clean. I've never seen Sangmani knocked out like that. And I've, I've, I was actually matched with Kulab Dam last year, and it somehow didn't happen. So fuck me if that happened. <laughs> I hope you've got enough money to bring my body back from fucking Thailand, Badger. You could have to tell my parents or something because if I have to fight him, god damn. I tell you what, though, the build-up was nice, though, because his blocking was on point, his movement was on point. I thought, he's looking sharp in this round, you know. Mm. Everything's going smooth, then out of nowhere, just put that three-hit combo. Bang. Two just hit his arm, and one just cleaned him out smoothly. Well, that's the good thing about, like, I enjoy watching Club Down because he's not like a, a, just a one-punch. He has got the one-punch power, but he do not just throw one shot. And in the stadiums, when I've seen a lot of his knockouts, and it's always been, like, the fourth or fifth shot that's landed yeah. that's knocked him out. To me, that's the one that catches you. Yeah. When you see the one shot coming, you, you kind of you prepare brace. yourself for yeah. it. When you feel yourself getting hit, you think, right, I'm going to be up. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> what the hell was that? And putting him in them little gloves as well, it's, of, of, honestly, mate, he's now, he went to the final, Rodlek lost to Samapetch, but Samapetch is now injured, so Rodlek's in the final. Oh? Rodlek cannot fight his style against Kula Dam and come out of it okay. He, he can't, there's certain people you cannot walk through, no. and he's one of them. Yeah. He'll just plant his feet and he's like, please <laughs> yeah. walk onto it. Yeah. I, 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 I'm begging you, walk <laughs> onto it. Exactly. He'll clip him, just take one step back and just wait for him again. So he'll have to change his tactics yeah. this time. I just don't think he can though. That's this Friday. The other one punch knockout, we're obviously <laughs> Povetkin and that left, I think, uh, the whole fucking boxing world in shock, not just does that one because I was watching it at a party. I had a few drinks and that and I had to like, I said, rewind that. I said, that, did that just happen? I don't believe it that just happened because he was getting fucked up on him, to be honest. You know what? I feel bad. <laughs> I feel bad, right? Because from round one to round four, it played out how it was meant to play out. Dylan White was hitting all the right shots. He wasn't getting caught with nothing stupid. He was feeding him, dropped him. He was a bit hurt, but he didn't rush in neither. Took his time again. Take him here, take him there. Dropped him again. Russian boy was sat on the floor shaking his head like... Oh. Yeah, he'd give up sort of, hadn't he? Like yeah. he didn't want to know. So I thought round five, this is the finisher. It was the <laughs> finisher, <laughs> but not the finisher I expected. I felt bad for D Dylan White. Do you know what he must have thought? He must have just thought, you know what? I'm going to throw one more big shot. <laughs> and if this, if this don't land, next time I go down, I'm not getting up. He must have just fucking put everything he had into that shot. And to be fair, I think we've all done this a few times. Just think, right, one more, just one more. And, but yeah, it landed and fair play to him because I thought it was done. I think everyone thought it was done, to be fair. I think the Russian looked more shocked than anyone else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just just like we planned. Yeah. I'm like, he said, he, he said he planned it. I was watching videos. That wasn't planned. You don't plan to get knocked on your ass two times or before mm. that, but... In, He's 41 and he, he got off the floor and he somehow pulled that out. So fair play to, to him for that one. But away from that now, <laughs> I told everyone, I said, they have, you're going to have to listen to this podcast because Badger's career, like got himself to UK, the best in one of the best in the UK, world champion, etc. And a lot of your best wins, like your biggest performances came on like a day's notice. <laughs> Before we start on your first fight, which was on a day's notice, no, it was on an hour's notice, one hour's <laughs> notice. What? Obviously, I think I started about a year before you, and then I remember when you came down, I think I just started having my first couple of fights, and I remember watching you and your friend Lexi, who you came with on the bag, and yeah. I, I said to Richard oh, one day, I said, because you used to come down, you used to keep yourself to yourself, come in and say, yeah, you're right, James, or Badger, 
we'll come to why you call Badger in a bit because I, I still don't know after 20 years. <laughs> And then, but after the class and before the class, I'd say to Richard, I'd say, look at them on the bag. I said, they're fucking getting good, them two. And you just get yourself to yourself. And then all of a sudden, you're in with fighters and you're sparring with us and that. What brought you down to Bad Company Gym? You're not going to believe it, but basically, Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan movies. <laughs> That's what Danny Mitchell said. <laughs> Kung Fu. <laughs> Kung Fu. I was like, everyone else, my boy was like, I'm going to this time boxing thing. You want to come? I was like, mm. But then I used to do like weight training and yeah, stuff. Yeah, you were jacked to them when you came yeah, down. Yeah, so I was like, go on then, I'll, I'll try it. Loved it right from the get. But when he stopped, I was there by myself a bit. So I was a little bit like, should I quit? And it was my mm. cousin actually that was like, if you love it, don't quit. Cause you, you waste this. I was like, all right, all right, I'll carry on. Then I made it to the fighters class, but you boys were still sparring with each other. And I got stuck with Jordan Watson. <laughs> welcome, <laughs> welcome to the fighters class. <laughs> but people that know Jordan like me, he was about, yay hi, what, 13, 40, something like that. And all he did was kick your legs every <laughs> other week. And he used to smash my legs for months. <laughs> but it helped though, because Jordan's so fast at low kicks. I became really fast at blocking low kicks. Well, wh even when we spar to this day, you're the only fucking person I can't <laughs> low kick. I can never get you with it even now. Obviously, that's my best weapon. I've, I've stopped some of the best fighters on the planet with it, and I still can't do it, and it pisses me off. So that's Jordan's fault, though. That is all Jordan. <laughs> and I think you you boys are fighting, and I said i come down. And I think it might be you for me, like, oh, <laughs> you'll have your first fight at Town Hall. And you were stoned as fuck as well. I'm not going to lie, I was high as hell. <laughs> so I was like, I was like... Pfft. I'm like, what? He's like, fight today? I'm like, yeah, go on then. I've a fight. <laughs> a few hours later, it, it, it sank in that I'm going to be fighting. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> but then, then someone called me back. I went, it don't matter. The opponent's turned up. Just come down anyway. I thought, oh, yeah, sweet. Nice. Light one. up again. <laughs> Blaze yeah. back up. Got to town hall now. Everyone's like, where have you been? I'm like, what are you on about? You fighting? I went, I'm not fighting. You went, you fighting? <laughs> and Jitty was there. Yeah, he was, yeah. Jitty was there. And I looked at Jitty, I went, what do you mean I'm fighting? He went, you fighting? I looked down, my hands were wrapped, I went, oh! <laughs> <laughs> Jitty moves like a ninja. I swear. And well, I fought Craig Richardson. Well, Craig there. Richardson by that time had probably had around nine or 10 fights. He was an area and I think an English champion. <laughs> <laughs> so we were like, actually, we tell him that he's got titles and shit. I'm like, no, don't anyone tell him. And then his opponent for that night was Michael Dix. Yeah. And Michael Dix didn't come because apparently he went fishing. <laughs> he forgot he was <laughs> he yeah, Oh, sorry. I forgot I was fighting apparently. Um, but yeah, he jumped in and you did a job on him, didn't you? You dropped oh. him twice, which is a shame because I love Craig. I know you're probably watching. He's a nice guy. I like him, but I you, you fucked him up. <laughs> I won't vibe, but I literally, I was not into the fight game at all. I like the fight moves, but boxing, time boxing, all that, I wasn't into it. So I remember dropping him and the referee went, go over there to the corner. And I looked at the referee and went, nah, nah, <laughs> I'm tired. I'm all right, I'll, I'll, I'll just stand here. I was like, are you lot going, you idiot, go to the neutral corner. And I'm thinking, what the hell are you on about? Yeah, you're probably and, still stoned, that's why. <laughs> I, did, I, did, I honestly did. Did of course, it went to neutral corner and that, oh, I remember that fight, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you did a job on him and that's when I think I'd, everyone knew you were something about it. But I'll tell you what, the first time I knew that you were fucking legit was you had a couple more fights after that, like novice, novice fight, and yeah. you had a, a few C class, like uh, B class. The first time I knew you were legit was when we went to Thailand when I was 17 and you were about 20-ish. Yeah. And I think you'd only had about four fights and there were a Thai there called Gore who was Omnoy Stadium ranked number two elite level stadium fighter and he started going hard on you in sparring and you looked at Jitty and went, what should I do? And Jitty just went, knock him out. <laughs> and you knocked him out in sparring and I was like, God damn. I was like, fucking hell. I was straight on blower back on going, Badger just knocked out Omnoy Champion. I can't believe it. And like he was big as well. He was seventy kilo tie. He wanted a little tie. No. Seventy kilos, and he was me trying to bully became, you, wasn't he? Me and became friends after that. Yeah. Buddy, you know, he actually showed me a lot of clinch stuff after that. But yeah, yeah I remember. My man died on that moment. Yeah, he did. He? Oh yeah, bless his soul. He's uh, he's yeah. passed away now. Yeah, he got um got drunk and went on his moped and died. A lot of a lot of people actually do that in Thailand. But yeah, uh, that was the first time, and I thought, shit, this guy is fucking good. Because I were I were a bit smaller than you back then. We were, we were fucking knacking me. We were going, and I thought, right. Badgie, you're up here. You're doing this for both of us. You come on. You know, I think you'd only had about four or five fights. 
And then you just- It just, was J. Yeah. Knock him out, I thought, yeah. right, I'm going for yeah. it then. He just punched him in the- He went, you want nothing anymore? No. And he just got out the ring, did he? He got out. He sat in the corner, sulking it. And then after that, then he started being right nice to you and showing you stuff and teaching. I know. <laughs> but you got his, his respect. You know what? I forgot about that because we, it was literally train, train party, train, train party for three weeks solid. How did we survive that? <laughs> well, we were getting it. Like the thing is, we'd have both fought on that trip because Jitty went, do you want to fight? And we both went, yeah, we're going to fight while we're here. And then we went out first night and that was the biggest mistake ever because the lights, <laughs> we saw all the lights <laughs> all and, and it just took over us then. So Jitty went, do you still want to fight? We went, no, we're still going to train every day, but we're getting in at like three o'clock and then going running at six <laughs> in the morning. We pulled it off like every day. I remember the one morning though when Jitty like dragged us up and I was absolutely fucking steaming still running around that park. <laughs> chat, and I, chat. Yeah, and I was just left. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, obviously that was the first time we'd been. We went to train and we learned some good shit there. We came back and then it had gone a bit quiet on the fight side, but then you had your first fight against the, the tie when you fought Tam. Oh, yeah. Going back to having you after your first fight, which was on a 24 hours note, well, a few hours notice, this one that rang you the day before the fight. And I remember, because I were working somewhere at the time, that's just a like, shitty part-time job, because I were only young as well. And Richie went, do you think James will fight tomorrow? I went, yeah, he's a decent pay. And he went, he's decent. They're right, so I rang you. And I said, right, we have to get in my car and go straight to weigh in. And you went, right, bring me some underpants. I'm at work. <laughs> <laughs> so I got you some underpants, got you from work. And we went to the weigh-in, didn't we? I forgot about that. <laughs> that was his retirement fight, wasn't yeah. it? And it was a good fight. We'd had a lot of fights, very, very experienced. And you just turned up on his home show <laughs> <laughs> and mashed him. Yeah. What were going through your head when you took that fight? Did you not even, did you think, you know what, it's fight. I'm, fuck it, I'm doing it. Basically, yeah. Yeah. Like, literally, I think it's better not to know who you're fighting. It's just yeah. like, I'm fighting a guy. Yeah, like, yeah. Come on, then. I've got fight. He's got fight. Let's just do this. I think that we, I've, we've touched on this before. I think a lot of, like, social media has ruined that for a lot of people now because people start going, oh, who is it? How many fights is he? Yeah. Has he had more fights than me? Yeah. Oh, look at his last fight. Look how good he is. But when you look on someone's Instagram and stuff, they don't put the bad stuff on there as well. So they just met themselves look like a fucking superstar. And if you would go on it and you're a bit nervous going, oh no, I can't fight him. And that, but obviously we didn't have any of that shit going on back nah. then. And that's what I mean. Cause basically you could watch someone get destroyed, but the other person could be absolute dog shit. Yeah. But you have no idea. And you're watching thinking, oh my God, that's going to be me on the receiving end of that. Oh no. <laughs> so we've turned up to that fight. <laughs> And then again, it was like, Badgy, he had about 70 fights, this guy. I think he'd had about six fights or something at the time. <laughs> but in round one and two, you like one were easy, but round two and three, you fucking destroyed him and you elbowed him and kneed him in the head and he had that big that, egg that on big. his head. I've never seen it like it. And they kept taking him at doctor. I'm going, they're going to stop it now. But I think because it was his retirement, retirement fight, fight in front of his in. own crowd, they kept going, just let him have one more round. <laughs> And oh. you battered him. I won't mind, but when I saw the nut, I was like, woo, fight's over, yeah. I can chill out now. Yeah. And it carried on. I've never been so tired in my life. Well, I'm going to come back to when you... <laughs> I, knew, I knew he was going to say that. It must have been round four or five. five. It, I, it was five. the last round. Yeah. And I thought, right, body shot. And I threw this body shot. And I've never left my... My soul left my body. And I missed the body shot. I fell flat on the floor. <laughs> floor face down. And you know what? Get up. And I went... Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Because then for just a split second, I thought, he's just going to lie down and have a rest here. I'm going, get up. He'll give you an egg out. Get up. You went, oh. I've never been so tired in but my life. We were, but you'd won the fight so easy by that point, though. Even in the corner, I think it me, Jordan and Andy and all three. We were just laughing his head off because you'd already won. So if it were like 50-50, we'd be going crazy. But that was so funny. Um, then after that, obviously, that was a massive win for you because Tam had a good rep. And then that promoter then, I think he tried to stitch you up on the next one because he did it to you again a few months later. <laughs> Went, oh, we've had another person pull out. Does Badger want to fight again? Who is it? Kickboxing world champion, Dave Newbrook. Oh, Newbrook. Another person who'd had about 60 fights or something. So oh. you, you've done it twice and on the bounce then and you fought him. Um, that were again in exactly the same situation. I no re- notice. I remember that because we turned up for the weigh-in. I went out at KFC. Came back and was like, right, you're on now and it. What do you mean? You're on now, get changed. Got changed. And they went, introducing James Francis. Yeah. <laughs> A tumbleweed blue oh, and everything. Yeah. And I walked and think, all right. They went and said, Dave Newbrook, the whole place just erupted. And I thought, 
Another local boy, here we go. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> you battered him worse than the tie, though. And you dropped him with a head <laughs> kick in round four. And you, he, I don't think he hardly even hit you for four. For four. It might have hit you a little bit of a right hand in the last round or something, which you just waved off and called him on. There were not any point in that fight where it looked like you were winning. <laughs> Plus the eight count. And then at the end, they called it a draw, didn't they? They give it a draw. And you just went, oh, well. I got yeah. paid. I, I got paid. I had a fight. I'm off. Tony was the referee, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just like, shake his head going... <laughs> I said, Tony, I, honestly, I don't care. Just give me one in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't even do what I did. Yeah. But uh, obviously, he were, again, but it just the same mindset because you're getting in there with someone who you knew was world champion then because obviously they build it on the poster, K1 world champion, Dave Newbrook. Did you did you give a shit? Oh, but again, just I'm turning up. I, I believe in my skills. I believe in how, how the people I train with, etc. You know what? You hit it on the head. I'm like, I can't believe... That it's worse than Smackdown Fridays with you lot. Yeah. I genuinely can't believe it. Because it's like having a war with you and having a war with Jordan. Yeah. And having a war with Andy. Yeah. And war, I'm like, these are five people combined and you're here alone. I'm like, dude. Because then, don't forget who we had. We had me, you, Andy, um, Jordan. Paul Robinson. Cadden, Robinson. We had Action Foot, Big Craig oh, Burke, the heavyweight, yep. putting his two pence worth in them whack downs. There was a, some, some hard, hard sparring. And then there'd be other people like coming in and stuff. So that's right, to be fair. If, if you can get through that Friday or <laughs> Monday or sometimes a Friday one, if you can get through that, you know you're ready. I tell you, I think a massive part of it is I hate when people say to me, oh, I'm going to have a fight. I'm like, yeah, brilliant. Right. I'm going to start training for a fight. I'm going I'm go I'm to lose weight. I'm going to get into shape. And I'm like... If y'all serious about this, you should be doing that anyway. Yeah. You you should be doing the stuff after the class. You should be doing the running. You should be doing that. So if something crops up. Yeah, you're ready to go, which is why you were always yeah. ready to jump in. You were, you were never too far overweight where you said, oh, sorry, I can't do it. I'm not on their weight. You were yeah. always around the weight so you could, you could turn up, weigh in and fight. Yeah. You always put the running in even when you weren't fighting. So you're always ready to go. But that's like you say, if you are anyone out there wanting to fight, put in the extra work anyway. Yeah. Do the hard round sparring because that's what gets you through it. Don't wait till they tell you you've got to fight. So, oh, I should do some extra knees on the back. I should do some, you should already be there. Yeah. Already be doing it. Yeah. So when someone says, do you want to fight? It's like, Maybe extra bit of hard work and yeah, I'm yeah. Not. So there shouldn't ever be like a doubt in your head, especially when you're like you're young and upcoming and wanting people to know who you are. You shouldn't never ever be at that stage. So I think how oh, well, old you might be in about 22, 23 yeah. when they fight. Well, if you're making a name for yourself at that stage, there should never be a point in your career if you get offered a fight where you go, "Ooh, I won't be ready in time." And there shouldn't be, should there really? It should always be about eighty percent. Yeah, they just step up to the hundred, then you fight, then back down to eighty. Don't just be like, right. I'm not going to the gym or I'm going to go and just mess about. Well, right? after oh, wait, wait. <laughs> there was one time <laughs> where you did the most spectacular thing I've ever seen any man do, where you weighed in at 65 kilos and then two weeks later you were 80 something kilos and you didn't even look like the same person. You look like Chef of South Park. <laughs> you did not have a shave. You came back in. I was like, eh, who's this fat guy who's in gym over here? <laughs> That's one of those times where you got a fight on the trot. Yeah, I think you, you did two in a row, didn't you? Yeah. yeah, and you denied yourself food for so long. I went, right, I'm done. <laughs> everything getting it. Donuts, crisps, everything. I just lined it up. I, I was making myself ill. That was just <laughs> stupid. But I needed to get every food that I had denied myself <laughs> in one sitting. Uh, so you did them two fights on the trot. I think you might have had another one or two in between. But then all of a sudden, the one that really made your name in the UK popped up. And again... On 24 hours notice, again, against another world champion, probably one of the hardest punches that the UK has had for a long time. Oh. And I remember that one, It were, this was very similar. You, I, I went, you were at work and Richard went, do you think Badger will fight Tim Thomas tomorrow? I went, probably, ask him. I remember I texted, do you want to fight Tim Thomas? He went, how much? I went, so and so. You went, let's roll. <laughs> <laughs> And you turned up and he pissed you off at the way in, didn't he? I was about to say, that's the first person to piss me off because I think I, I sat there Were you meant to fight Frasher or it? Oh. Yeah. yeah somehow, someone like that. And he won't look at me and I thought, who's this guy? Like, who's he? And he's like, I don't want to fight this guy. I should be fighting Andy Frasher's and Michael Dixon's. Yeah. Who's this? And I just thought, oh my God, I want to hurt you. So <laughs> well, when he said that, I saw you like, get, I thought, oh shit. And I when I told Andy about it, I went, he just said, who's this guy? I don't want to fight this guy. I said, Badger's fuming. And Andy just went, well, Tim's fucked up there, hasn't he? <laughs> because what a performance that was. Jesus. It's funny, right? But I've, I've never tried to knock anyone out. My plan is always 
to beat you to the point of submission. Yeah. I'd rather you give up than knock you out. Yeah, Because yeah. I think sometimes if I knock you out, there's a little doubt, a little bit of doubt thinking, if he never hit me, I'm, I've had this. Yeah. I want to batter you, so this School, never, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This doesn't have to happen again. Like, you understand it's done. <laughs> and I remember it hit me and I thought, yeah, that, that was hard, that. Yeah. Jesus, you're all right, all right, yeah, yeah. And he went to do it again and I thought, right. <laughs> so the power that you're coming at me, if I step in with this elbow, you're going to basically walk onto this elbow with the same power. And it hit him square in the mouth. <laughs> and his legs went all wobbly and I thought, yeah, got him. But he got up and I thought, right. I ran in a few shot, he put his head down. I've grabbed hold of him. I've tried to knee him, but he's put his head up. I managed to kick him in the yeah, face. Yeah, like a so flick kick on a flick kick. <laughs> and that was that. And uh, so basically, for anyone who don't know, Tim at the time was one of the most feared punchers. Uh, he was still one of the big hardest hitters we've probably had for a, a long, Ooh. long time. He used to have a lot of knockouts. Again, at that time, I think you'd have had about what eight fights and he mm -hmm. was world champion. Um, he was had a real good rep and Badger just stepped in two days notice, <laughs> knocked him out. And then everyone started to stand up and take notice and they were like, wow, this guy is fucking good. <laughs> and then I think after that, it was... Your next big one with Chris Nagimbi won it. Oh, and then Glory Masters Gensho. Glory superstar now. And what I think he fight under K1 rules, he fought all the best ones. But that was a sick performance. Did you know much about him when you fought him? No. I didn't know much. Everyone said he's um the flying Zulu, this and that. Yeah, and so. yeah. I never heard of him. I respected him straight away because the first thing he did was push kick me right in the mouth. <laughs> did, did he? And I remember you got right mad, you went, Ugh. <laughs> It was like, calm down. I'm like, right, right, calm down, calm down. That's you the... fought him southpaw, didn't you? Yeah. Because yeah. you changed the southpaw. Yeah. It, it was awkward. Mm. Literally. Every time you put some moves on him, he went like, he could do a flying knee and I thought, yeah. if I stay well, southpaw. Well, then K1 guy, that's them, that's their go-to danger move, isn't it, with them K1 that guys? That flying knee, so I thought, yeah. if I stay southpaw, I'll stay back a bit. I can step off. Yeah. All the time, he did a flying knee and I stepped off and I hit him with everything. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> Wait, I think you dropped him as well in that <laughs> fight, didn't you? Oh. But but that showed how good you are to, because you used to train a lot in Southpaw, didn't you? You used yeah. to love it. But whenever me or Jordan or Andy were fighting the Southpaw, we were like, Badger, you're going to have to train Southpaw for a bit. So he did. So just to show that you can do it at that level against such an accomplished fighter like him. That was a, a masterclass. And you kept like, you left kicking him and you kept teeping his leg when he was trying to punch you and he couldn't hit you, could he? And I could see how mad he was getting as well. And I felt a bit sorry for him at one point. Know. It was crazy to actually see him turn into the superstar he is now. I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Whoa. Well, he were a big name back then as well. Yeah. But then after, after Glory obviously came around and he propelled and- Showtime, everything. Shit, yeah, yeah, boy, yeah. Because he had, to, didn't he have a crazy fight on Showtime? I can't remember who he had it with. Oh. Um, the little stocky Moroccan. And he needed need, yeah, need, chin yeah. and split his yeah, chin. Yes. Yeah, that was a, such a sick fight. Um, so then, you but you you on the scene now. Everyone fucking knew like who were the top dog around that way. Uh, you went to Thailand then. And I remember this was fucking brilliant when we went to Thailand. And Jitty went, you want to fight at Raj And he went, yeah. Oh. And you, you're fighting a Thai. And Jitty went, right, you got to fight really bad in first round. He said, don't show them how good you are <laughs> because we won't be able to gamble. <laughs> And Rick Conner kept saying to me, going, Liam, make sure he understands he has to fight rubbish. I said, he does, JT. He did it only for round one and two. I said, he understands. I, I won't mind, but everyone I fight is always taller than me. Um, round about the same height. This was the smallest, fattest time I've ever seen in my life. And I, and I thought, right, this should be easy work. Just look, duck shit. And he ran round and I thought, what's he doing? He kicked me in the back leg and I just broke my, <laughs> broke my kneecap in two. But... I kept my shit together. I was doing bits and pieces, not, nothing too much. And he grabbed me in the clinch. And in fact, <laughs> Sha Charlotte recorded it on, on a video camera. We're in the clinch. And I thought, I've got to do something. So I started punching him in the clinch. <laughs> and that's the same laugh. That's the same laugh. You can hear me? Video, video burst out I'll laughing. I don't think he's shit. He's fucking selling this. This guy's good. So after two rounds, I've sat down. And I'm like, Jitty's like, yeah, yeah, this is amazing. Yeah, perfect. We can nearly bet soon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're almost there, just one more. Right, 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 one more round. <laughs> so he's attacking me. I'm not, I'm not doing much. But he threw a head kick. Wait, 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 wait. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> We've been schooled in such a way. Some reflexes happen. <laughs> so he's punched me and I've bounced off the ropes. And if you were low kick, and as I blocked the low kick, my leg went boom, boom. Yeah. And I went, oh, and it hit him in the face and I thought, oh. and his legs wobbled out. 
And I like, looked in the corner. <laughs> and they, you you lot looked at me, so I thought, right, just, just try <laughs> running through some shit punches. I sat down and went, is it all right? And Jit went, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've blown it. <laughs> You've ruined it all. <laughs> go finish him. Just go kill him. Yeah. I thought, all right, all right. <laughs> fair enough. I think I just walked out head kicked yeah, him. Yeah, he just knocked his park out. And the promoter was meant to pay 10,000 yeah. pounds for a head kick. And then he lied and went, yeah, it didn't land. Hit him straight across his head. <laughs> hit him in Full his shin. <laughs> went, Where's his 10,000 pounds? No, I didn't hit him. <laughs> the, why is he just sparked on floor then? This in Bangla Stadium. This is Rajadam Nerd. Rajad- uh, and his daddy still won't pay us. Yeah. I was absolutely heartbroken. I'd already spent that down soy four in my head. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah, you obviously you've you've trained with a lot of like um really good top level like ties and trainers and stuff like that. Who's the best tie you've sparred with? Sparred with best tie best tie I've sparred with learned off of and you know him. He's a god amongst gods. Basically all ties I've met are nice. Like they're all nice, they're all good people and that. This man is genuinely the Antichrist. <laughs> He's the devil in here. <laughs> he, he hates everything, hates everyone, but he'll get respect for you. Yeah. Ratchasak. Yeah. I've yeah. never had no one teach me and build me up so much. Remember yeah. that time he made us cry nearly? <laughs> you know what? I was just about to say that. And he just won't let us go and he's done us both. I've been doing that with people. I said, this is called a shared fate. What, what do you mean? Both of you are gonna share the same thing. Yeah. You're both gonna die together. <laughs> I've walked in the gym and I think you, you was already in there. Yeah, and I went, yes. <laughs> Cause I knew I was saved. And he was beasting you. And I'm looking and he went, James, change. I was like, <laughs> and he kept me and you downstairs for an hour. 10 kicks, you, 10 kicks, you, elbow. And he wouldn't let it us just go. just didn't stop. It just kept going and going and going. Everyone walked in the gym, like looked at us and went, <laughs> Well, the only rest we got was my when, when you were doing your 10 kicks. Yeah. And then in my 10 kicks, then yours. And that went on for about 10 minutes on its launch, doing 10 kicks, 10 kicks, 10 kicks, 10 kicks, then elbows, then he, knees. He kept us for a solid hour. <laughs> I was thinking, when's it going to end? I thought, hang on a minute, because I hold pads myself. It's fucking tiring. I thought, yeah. when's he going to get tired? No. Never tired. No. Never tired. That man, he made you tough. Yeah. You had no choice. Sometimes in pad work is a point. You know what you... You're not crying, but you get that weird wheezing out. <laughs> that, that, that wheezy noise, that's the noise he'd get out of you. And he taught me basically, I don't care how tired you are, if someone hits you hard, you, you fight. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he was old school, one. He yeah. were like at top of his peak, late 80s through to the early and mid 90s. And he's, what were his fight name? Knee fighter. Knee fighter, that's. Steel that, Souls. That steel like, Souls, <laughs> yeah. yes. Anyone who, if I saw my opponent were called that, I'd want to get in the ring. I'd be like, nah, I'm not fighting this guy. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, at Jitties, there were obviously a lot of good fighters. And what about Watari Chai? Remember when he used to beat us down? Yeah. <laughs> but he was not the same evil. Yeah. He were a yeah. great, great fighter and technical. But no, I don't think there's anyone who can come. Devil kick were horrible to me. But yeah. all he, he just used to like kick the low kick bag and then just tell everyone how good he was with his kick. He was the only one that could make that low kick bag slap. Yeah, he, and I couldn't do it. No I, one could it, do I it. Think, hey, how is he doing this? He's 60 years old or something. Yeah, I remember that. You know what? The underground king. Do well. Do I? Do you know what? I knew you were going to say him because we had some good sparring with him, didn't we? When he was at the yes. Gym. He taught us so much. He was another level. He's the first person I've seen Make me cry. To, yeah. <laughs> Make me cry. <laughs> because normally you beat ties up a bit, so they went onto a skill level. Yeah. So they tried to left kick you and move around. He just outward me. You hit him and his <laughs> eyes glazed over. He, I've never seen a tie look so mad and he stood up and just went after you. I was yeah. like, he just fucked me up. He didn't just beat me, just beat me down. <laughs> that was the worst and the best thing that could have happened to me at the time because I was in a bad way after that fight. <laughs> but I think we mentioned it on Andy's podcast before that, like, I thought, right, I need to go to Thailand and like just fight out these guys. If I said I can't fight with these guys. I'm more clinching yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly. Because mate, he just locked me. I was only about 18 at the time. I'd never yeah. fought. I'd fought a few ties, but never any elite ones like him. Killers. I think his fight before that, like, he just beat Anno out. And <laughs> I didn't really know who he was. And I thought, it's all right, I'll just knock him out. And then when he got up, I thought, that was weird. They usually stay down. But what's going on here? And it, honestly, I remember he just got up and he smiled at me. He had no gum shielding. He had yeah. blood, blood all over his teeth. And I thought, oh no, this guy's crazy. And then round ended, 
I thought, right, I'll knock him out this round. Then he just fucking on it. He ran out. He kept booting my knee in from inside, which off balanced me. So I couldn't throw my punches. Then elbowing me. Then just grabbing me like with a vice lock and I just couldn't move. I hated that fight because there's nothing worse than someone coming back to the corner looking for advice. <laughs> and everyone in the corner's going. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think at one point I looked at Richard and Lisa and Andy. I think were you in corner as well? Yeah. I'm looking at I'm looking around the old corner for someone to tell me what to do, and everyone kept going. <laughs> <laughs> but like when you're in with someone of that level yeah. and you've never been in there before, it was complete shocked at system. There's nothing we could have told you. There's absolutely <laughs> nothing in the world. But we were lucky because he came to train with us, didn't yeah. he? And he stayed in Leeds with us for three months. And uh, remember when he fought that French guy? <laughs> He didn't even train, he just sparred, like play sparred and that were it. I loved it because we know how good the wow is. He went out and we all just sat there, sat back. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one shouted nothing, no one told him nothing. We just sat and basically watched this show. Yeah. You can't help the wow. Nah. Literally, under, even in Thailand, when you mentioned his name, people were like, oh, do yeah, I Yeah, that? he was so unlucky not to be like a Rajan. I think he was the Omni champion. Uh, and he was obviously top five and top three at the other stadium, but he never got to fight for the title probably because of the he politics never, with his promoters and stuff. Never became a superstar. Yeah, and he should have been. He used to make Anya Wat cry in sparring. Uh, what a try. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. What a try. Yeah. Man, he used to make him cry. I'm like, that, that's a whole nother level of game. That. Exactly. And when he fought Anna Wat, he beat him twice as well. Like, Anna Wat went on to be like, obviously, because of his KO style, everyone loved him. But when you got someone who just schooled a fighter like that, yeah. it's. Yeah, I felt bad for him. What about the best up and comer in the UK at the minute? Because so this was one of the questions someone told me to ask you. Because and you're obviously you're a good trainer yourself. You've got a good eye for talent. You you work obviously at a bad company gym and at Legions and a place like that. And you've so you know you know what's what with up and coming fighters. Is there anyone we should Ooh. need to look out for? The name that keeps getting mentioned is Stabler. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> you know what? I can't wait to spam that boy because I think he's the next level. Yeah, in. he's sick in it. I like him. He's perfectly balanced. Yeah. He's, he's got the scoring if it's needed. He's got the killer instinct if it's needed. He's a nasty bastard. He's yeah. got the hands. He's got the kicks. Yeah. Yeah. And one I always say is Liam Nolan, because I think he's sick him. He's oh. signed to one championship now. He's southpaw. And if you want to spar with him, he's coming to Leeds on the 10th of September. He's coming Ooh. to Bad Company to do some training with us. So he'll be yeah, there Yeah, shout me for that. Yeah, that'll be a good one. I about to say, but... Before Stabler, it was Jonathan Haggerty, but now... Now Haggerty's there now. Yeah, yeah. He's there now, so definitely Stabler. Yeah, 100%. He's because there. I remember Jono. I love Jono. Johnny and my boy. But Jono, it was announced that I was fighting him. And I was like... I text Jono and went, are you insane? <laughs> I said, I'm not being funny, but this kid, he's going to have a, a big line of victims until he gets to near the top. Yeah, 100%. You, he's going to just leave body bags. Yeah, yeah, just body bags. I'm like, do you want to be one of the body bags? But he said, oh, oh, but we I, kept telling him, we come and said, you need some sparring. You yeah. need sparring for this fight. Constant. We tried, but. We tried our best. Yeah, yeah. Like that kid's a literal serial killer. He is. He <laughs> is. He's next level. Um, and he, how old is he? Is he 20 now or whatever? He, I'm ready to see him get tested now. Yeah. Who's number one on that way? I can't even, I don't even know who's number one on that way. Can you find that out for us? Or is it over there, Grant, please? UK number one, uh, uh, 59 kilo. It should be on the, uh, I can't remember what the, the, the thing is. What is it? Fif 59, 59. 59. 59. But there's, so obviously there's Dean James hovering around that oh, way. Yeah. Um, obviously he's already beat Chip Jace. There's Haggerty hovering around that way. There's Keith McLaughlin hovering around that way. Keith, Keith was down the other week. I spy with Keith. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is now, Keith's obviously 40, 40, 41 years old. He don't need to be coming back and no. fighting up and coming 20 on your you know, road and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, whoever he fights next, I've, Honestly, he's the nightmare. <laughs> he's just the way he throws that elbow like off the body shot. He'll body shot you, then just sling a massive elbow out of nowhere as well. It means every shot. That that to me is where tie boxing should be. Yeah, There's nothing worse than watching two guys with no power just hitting each other. And you, I just started going. Yeah. So even when you're trying to score in Muay Thai, you still still be trying to do it with power and venom and with some spite. I intent, think. Yeah. intent, exactly. When you throw it, throw it with real intent. We've come here to see. Sorry, who just found? Uh, Kilograms yeah. Dean James, number one. Right. Uh, number two, Francesco Tiano. Oh, that's uh, the fight, right? Yeah, yeah. And number three, Jono 
Chip Chase. Yeah, that'll be f- now number three will be Stabler. Yeah, Stabler, yeah, yeah. So then it'd be Dean James versus Stabler, Stabler isn't it? Oh, Stabler, yeah, I think he's Stabler won Stabler since he's won since then. He's, he beat the guy who's number three, so he's obviously took his place. Ooh, so that's a nice fight, that. Mm, interesting. Right, your last fight. Then obviously you've had a, you had, did have a great career. Uh, well, you won a world title against Tommy McCormick as well. You'd done everything you wanted to do, but you always had that little itch for the MMA club, <laughs> didn't you? You'd seen it happening a few times, and you always you'd retired by this point. Oh, no. I think you what were your record? Your thirty wins, one loss, or something uh, like that. Yeah, f- f- thirty one, two losses, one draw. Yeah, there you go. Uh, the draw, won a draw though. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. So you'd had a really good career. You'd won a world title, but then it got to the, you kept saying, "Oh, I'd love to have a go in MMA gloves," and then all of a sudden it started becoming a thing. <laughs> and you'd seen it and you went I'd love to have a go and then you went right I'm out of retirement and you fought in the cage in MMA gloves how did you find that uh, obviously you'd, you had, were your son at your fight then as well how, yeah. was, that, how was that for you because obviously that must have been good to be to win that I wanted to get that fight photo yeah yeah with both my kids but yeah what I like about the MMA gloves I've done time boxing my whole life but I like other martial arts I like the K1 I like the boxing yeah so I started to study them a lot more and I'm thinking, you know what? I'm not going to exploit tie boxes. You know what? I'm not to use these hands more. You know what? I want to put hands on someone. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I remember S- Smithy was away and he went, I-, 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 I can't be there for your fight, but I've got a piece of advice. Kick. I looked at Smithy and went. <laughs> and he went, well, I went, I went, do you know I'm fighting the little boys? He's like, yeah, I'm like, I will kick some, some, like, I tried to kill him with a kick, but yeah. like, me and him are coming here to knock each other out. This isn't scoring or sometimes tie box is about how much you can endure. Yeah. How much punishment you can give you each other. You can't, yeah, not with that. No. No. One of you is going to pull the trigger. Yeah. It don't matter how many 10,000 kicks you land at some point, someone's going to get clipped and, and someone's going to go down. People are willing to take a kick just to fucking throw a punch because they know I'll take that and boom. Yeah. It's a lot different. That. I'm so glad I did that before I retired. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Well, I can, what were his name when you thought? I forgot his name. Um, Bernie. Yeah, yeah, Bernie, yeah. From yeah. Down, down South, wasn't he? Yeah, um, sound guy. He'd, had some, he'd fought Kevin Ross. He'd fought um, just the Gressowicks. He'd fought some decent people. Yeah. And um, you just put him to sleep, didn't you? Like, literally, round two, ironing him board, flat out. That must, like you said, then that must have been good. in them gloves as well. I think that is the next level. You've got your A, B, C class, and I think that's the finishing level. Once you get to level with the little gloves on, like one championship, yeah. all, all tie fights now out, out yeah. with the gloves. I think that's the yeah. The, do you know what? Because I say this, like there's a lot of like young young fighters who are like signed to them now, and they ain't got a choice now, but then just smash your hands in every single yeah, fight. I'm like, <laughs> it's too early. Yeah, you need to like. I always think you need to get your trade first and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, I was lucky because obviously by the time I was 22, I might have had like 50, 60 fights, so I already had like pretty experience. But like there's young kids on there now which are getting thrown in and you're fighting like like I got here Rogtang and then other ties and stuff and they'll do you know what over three rounds and stuff it, it might be the same striking level but there's always that experience that yes. it's a bit of difference and to me having one of those fights is like having f- maybe three tie fights yeah. I'm like the physical damage yeah. to your hands to your face to your shots I'm like well I always said I wouldn't do it because I've suffered with that you know I've had bad hands my whole career yeah. but then I've had like um, a sports doctor like and a f- some injections into my hand and CBD and stuff like that and I can keep it all at bay now so as soon as I realised my hands weren't hurting anymore I went give me them gloves <laughs> give me them gloves <laughs> I thought I need to try this and then I did it in like my first fight with Rodlek when I wore them I was scared to throw them because I was scared I was going to break my hands and then I got dropped I did it all and I just went right fuck this yeah yeah and I started winning easy and I thought, why didn't do this earlier? But you know, a little light bulb goes off because Chris Shaw. Yeah. Chris Shaw for Rodley. Yeah, yeah. I, and I said to him after the fight, I went, you just started the fight wrong. Yeah. You went in there like it's a tie boxing fight and you was throwing kicks. This is a boxing fight with kicks. <laughs> that's exactly what it, this is a boxing fight with kicks. And he yeah. threw so many kicks, he kicked himself out of yeah, it. Yeah, he got tired the next. So when he got... Mm. And I'm like, dude, if you're going there with a different mentality, your fight would have been a lot different. Yeah, 100%. You, you can't just try to outscore on that. They're trying to kill you every minute of the round. And at some point, they, they're going to get you. Yeah. Like you said, people are just willing to get kicked just to throw a punch. And those those gloves, they're, they're, they're unforgiving. <laughs> they're unforgiving. Um, unless obviously, Rod, Rod Leck is like rock hard. So like with Chris fight with that, he, he was walking through elbows and he would cut to ribbons and stuff just to land... 
I think he hurt Chris at body and then he dropped him with a left in in the last yeah. round. But I think it more to the point where he's, he was so tired. Like you say, he kicked so much and his arms were down. It wasn't uh, like a massive shot. I think he was just exhausted that did that. I keep telling people, kicks take a lot out of you. Yeah. In a Thai boxing fight, we'll, we'll have a kicking fight. Mm. But in that, if I'm kicking you and you're walking closer and closer, by the fifth or sixth kick, I've got a minute where I just go, <sighs> that's when you're running like, <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's right it's, 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 because even like there's no gaps to like protect yourself well nope. there's loads of gaps so you can't like just put your hands up <laughs> like in Thai boxing if you're winning and you get a bit tired you can do long guard you can teep and put your hands up a little bit get your bit. breath back yeah you know. if someone's just swinging at you in them little gloves you're like fucking whoa you can't just back off like that right I've just remembered something just bouncing at me head. our Andy said I've got to ask you this earlier <laughs> but that time he said ask him about that time we were struggling to make weight and all he were eating with Jamaican gingerbread because you thought he were healthy <laughs> that's what he said make sure you ask him that you have to remember this is old school there was no dietitians there, there was, was no nothing people they don't realise how lucky they had these kids <laughs> these days fruit and bread I'm like yeah winning for me <laughs> 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 I, I mean, wait, I'm waiting coming down and I'm Richard going what are you eating I went fruit bread oh no <laughs> in fact you know what fight that was for don't worry the rematch versus Steve Patterson oh shit have we talked about that oh no yeah no we haven't <laughs> right because I beat my master skins and it was a pretty s smooth victory and they were like we want a rematch I thought I don't like doing rematches, but if he wants it, he wants it. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, well, we went into the fucking hills of Scotland. Oh, where I, wow. don't even, I don't know where we were. That was the dodgiest place <laughs> I've ever seen. But there were just all his mates in there. There must have been like just seven, 800 just crazy drunk Scottish people. All wanting your hole. blood. In your blood. Of... Yeah. It was that bad. I went to the toilet. There was no cubicle doors on the toilet. <laughs> there was no toilet seats. I was like, yo, this place is kind of rough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and... You were winning the fight, but you started to get tired, didn't you? Oh. Which is obviously because of the weight cut. And you were fucked at the end of round four. I remember when I shouted at you. <laughs> what people don't realise is, when you're watching a fight, you see him going back and forth. There's a lot of thought that goes on in that ring. Yeah. And I was getting chinned, and it was bouncing me around the ring. <laughs> and I, I'm there thinking, fuck Thai boxing. This is shit. I'm never, I'm never fighting again. <laughs> I don't see the point in this. You know what? This is crap. I don't want to do this. I wanna, while I'm thinking that, He's punching me from pillar <laughs> to post, well, back and forth. And I bounced off the rope and it hit me with an elbow. And it cut me. It bad, didn't it? Yeah. And I remember sit sitting down. I was already done. I was already out the ring. I, <laughs> I was finished. I was like, bollocks, bollocks to this. And it was you that actually. <laughs> oh, I screamed at you, did I? I screamed at you. You're giving a gladiator speech. <laughs> oh, what the fuck are you doing? And you better get out there now yeah. and you'll knock him out. And you went, all right. <laughs> no. You said, what if your cousin oh, was yeah, here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You said, what if your cousin was here watching you get bad around the ring? I was like, <gasps> <laughs> no, you didn't. Yeah. Oh, oh, you get out there and you knock him out. I'm going to. But I remember he stepped in and I've hit him with the elbow and it split his lip oh, up there. Oh, awful that, yeah. And then I clubbed him right there and he dropped and I thought, yeah, you're down, yeah. Well, all them seven, 800 oh, Scottish wow. people who were screaming their head off it, which went deadly silent. And we out, he was running around ring celebrating, weren't you? And I was going, Badger, Badger, no, no. He went, oh shit. But you were all right when he, yeah, when he, fi when he finally got up. Yeah, <laughs> I, I made a good night out as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, with that, though, that comes back to your character there because you were just, you accepted you'd been beaten and you were getting battered at that round four, but you didn't give up. Yeah, no. you might have, like, give up a bit mentally oh, if I, oh, you know what? I just but a lot of people it. would have just fucking thought, you know what, I can go down here. And no one would have asked any other questions yeah. because when the beating's coming on, I might think, oh, no, he got fucked up there. But you took it and you just took your little fucking <laughs> speed to snap you out of it. <laughs> <laughs> and you won by KO. Yeah, that come at the right time because I was proper in a mood. You know, when you're in a mood and no one can get you out of it. <laughs> yeah. <It's> like, <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, God, I forgot about that. But Jesus. what, yeah, what, like, again, like, these are the... The crazy experiences that are like, like you need to like build you as yeah. a fighter and stuff like you're fighting in these crazy sports halls in the middle of nowhere with no one cheering for you. And you did basically your whole career, a lot of massive fights when you said, right, do you want, do you want to come fighting? Where is it? Well, nowhere anywhere we know. No, we don't know anyone. We just turned up. You've got like a thousand people all on his side and you just always came out on top somehow. <laughs> just fucking just brought yourself to the occasion. Normally, I remember a time we got screwed over. France. 
Oh shit, yeah. Oh my god. We trashed the hotel like rock stars though. <laughs> I told him here off the wall. Yeah. I won't mind, but we got there. I was bang on six six point six. That world title fight. World title fight. They put the scales down, got on the scales, yeah, yeah, brilliant. They went, oh, okay. They went, oh. Did you fight Tim Thomas? I went. Maybe. <laughs> this is <laughs> tricky. Don't, I'm like, don't tell him, don't tell him. Yeah, he's like. I went, oh, yeah, 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 good, good fight. He went, oh, how did you win? I was like, I don't know, P points. Knock, knock, I, don't, I, I don't know. He's yeah. like, oh, he came back. I went, all oh, right, yeah, yeah. I didn't realise that Tim Thomas has fought his boy before. I took the world title off of his boy. Yeah. So they said, right, you wait, it's all right. Everything's perfect. All you got to do now is tomorrow we're waiting at five o'clock. Do you fight about six, seven? <laughs> I'm like. A world title fight. I'm like, no, I'm on way. I'm here. The weigh-ins now. Now? Yeah. No, 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 no. We've got to do it. Then I went, right, right. I know he fights the same weight as me. Yeah. I don't care what he weighs in at. I'll weigh now and he can just turn up tomorrow. And I don't care. And the guy was short on me. Yeah. Oh, you, you'd have had a field day on him. The second time someone was short on me. I went, <laughs> I, I, I went, I don't need to use weight. I just know he fights at my weight anyway. So let's just do it. And they were not having it. Well, I, what, when have you ever heard in your entire life of a world title fight getting on the scales two hours before the show? They've obviously got wind that you've knocked him Thomas out. And Couldn't they've just thought, it. right, we will stitch this guy up. Couldn't believe it. <laughs> and then they took us to the show where this fat chick sang simply <laughs> the best as to give him the world title. Yeah, just give him it. I can't believe it. I absolutely, oh. And the, the craziest thing about that wall, we didn't ever know where we are because no. we'd ask some people, I said, are we in France or Belgium? And some people go, Belgium. Yeah. But then we'd ask someone else and they go, France. He was like, they didn't want to be, be <coughs> connected. He was like, we're in the fucking hills of nowhere. Nobody wants to own up to this crappy town. Yeah. There, was, there was nothing in this town. There wasn't even a McDonald's. There was zero. There were, there were them rats in that pet shop and we went in and we went to look at the rats and all the rats were eating each other. I was like, Badger, this is a weird place, mate. We said, we need to get the fuck out. We you, bought loads of alcohol and went and smashed the hotel up. <laughs> you were saved just because you could say chips in France. Yeah, that's all we had for three days. For three days, we just lived on chips. <laughs> oh, no. That, I hated that so much. Yeah, that was a fucking, that was a shit experience. But along with, yeah. it, along with the, the good, there has to be a few <laughs> few bad, bad popped in there. Uh, mate, I'm going to wrap it up. Um, if anyone wants to follow you on Instagram or get you for PTs or seminars, what's your Instagram tag? Uh, Red Viper. Red Viper. Uh, you are available for PTs and seminars, etc. Yeah, just shout at me, man. Yeah. Uh, if you, anyone doesn't know, Badger is one, obviously. Me, Jordan Watson, Andy House, and he, we vouch for him as being like our best sparring partner and one of the main reasons for all our success. So if you do want a seminar or any PTs off him, just hit him up. Uh, he's a great coach as he was a fighter. Mate, thank you for coming on. <laughs> anytime, yeah, thank anytime. you. <laughs> Speak soon. Right.